United Nations are about to investigate the New Zealand government over the conduct of the October the 15th raids. People might remember that from last year when they raided our anarchist brothers and sisters and our Māori brothers and sisters who are just fighting for the rights of their peoples and our lands. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights while countering terrorism has agreed that there are grounds to investigate the New Zealand government over its conduct during the October the 15th raids. This is the first time that a complaint from a group against the nation state has been accepted by the rapporteur. The complaint was lodged by lawyers acting on behalf of the Tūhoi nation and some of the accused in the case. It is based on some 14 specific instances of breaches of human rights. The New Zealand government has been issued with a list of questions by the United Nations and it is required to provide a response to these within six months. The complaint was submitted pursuant to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. The grounds of the complaint are acute breaches of rights to privacy, freedom from discrimination and personal liberty, for which there are no available domestic remedies. The violations arise from the conduct of the police, elected politicians and the media and pertain to what has been termed without objective or legal foundation and anti-terrorism operation. Depending on the response of the government or lack thereof, the rapporteur may make a ruling on the complaint or decide to investigate further, possibly assisting, possibly visiting Aotearoa in order to interview victims of the raids, arrestees, lawyers and naturally members of the Puaka and the Grubbiman. There is no domestic mechanism capable of the inquiry into the collective rights of self-determination and culture held by the Tūhoi Nation. A civil action may be pursued on behalf of individuals who are affected, but even if this succeeds at considerable cost and delay, it cannot address the collective and systemic harm caused to the affected communities and the Tūhoi Nation. Attempts to secure recourse through the Waitangi Tribunal for violation of Tetiriti or Waitangi would likewise be ineffective as the Tribunal only has powers to make recommendations on such matters to the government and has failed to report on the earlier claim by the Tūhua Nation that was concluded several years ago. The New Zealand government likes to extol its human rights record to the world. Meanwhile, it conveniently ignores the condemnation of varying UN bodies when it doesn't suit the government's fairy tale of amicable race relations. In 2006, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous People visited Aotearoa to investigate breaches of human rights as a result of the Foreshore and Seabed Act. Following the investigation, the rapporteur issued a report detailing the violations of human rights to which the New Zealand government has roundly ignored to date. Needless to say, people around the world are not blind to the New Zealand government's double speak when it comes to Māori. Statements from the world, including the Canadian Postal Workers Union and the Zapatista Liberation Army, indicate that support for the right of Māori to self-determination will not be denied. The uh, Ghana descendant from Adelaide, uh, proud Ghana descendant, and I've worked with, been working with Indigenous peoples across the Pacific, across the Pacific for the last 10-15 uh, years. Um, I suppose it's very important to show solidarity at the moment, uh, working with West Papua and particularly colonised peoples in West Papua and Papua New Guinea. Uh, we're all from the one mob. We're all connected through culture, through blood, through song lines. And it's really, really important to show that the same people that invaded Aotearoa are the same people that caused the destruction and colonisation here, the destruction of our country, the pollution of our rivers and the very threat to our entire future. So to stand with the Tōhoi and all the other Māori nations across the Pacific, um, especially in recognition that the Waitangi has been breached, has been breached by the settler government. We're working on something at the moment which is very old, it's very powerful, and it's about bringing together the old mob right across the Pacific. And as a result, my uh, colleague, my brother, has been made chief uh, of the Vanuatu Council of Chiefs. Um, I wear with honour this badge of chieftain from the Pacific, uh, from the Sepik River of the uh, Papua New Guinea, and had been involved in bringing boats out to this country based on the same design that Māori and Polynesian people used to settle 
in a decent way settle the Pacific and populate the Pacific. So it's with great honour that I stand here in solidarity with Māori and Indigenous peoples across the Pacific. And uh, just to show everyone, we stand on sovereign land here. And in fact, I've got just, just seen the very perfect person to speak about these right now. Um, this is a demonstration that in 1788, under international customary law, three things were meant to happen by the British. They never did it. One was a treaty with each and every one of the Aboriginal nations in this country, and at the time of invasion, there was way over 500. So that's a treaty with each and every one of us. The other point, of course, is if they couldn't sign a treaty, they had to declare war on us and get a declaration of surrender. None of that happened. Finally, there's a bill of sale and a receipt. I mean, try proving you own anything without a receipt. The same goes for country. We can't sell country, it's not ours to sell. It belongs to our ancestors and it belongs to our descendants. So uh, this passport here is proof that the country of Australia in itself doesn't exist, just like the country of New Zealand does not exist. So we stand with the Indigenous peoples in solidarity.